A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After three months, we set sail on a ship that had weathered, weathered at the island of Malta. It was an Alexandrian ship with the Diosheer as its figurehead. We put in at Syracuse and stayed there three days. And from there, we sailed round the coast and arrived at Regium. After a day, a south wind came up, and in two days, we reached Petolio. There we found some brothers and were urged to stay with them for seven days. And thus we came to Rome. The brothers from there heard about us and came as far as the Forum of Apias and three taverns to meet us. On seeing them, Paul gave thanks to God and took courage. When he entered Rome, Paul was allowed to live by himself with the soldier who was guarding him. He remained for two full years in his lodgings. He received all who came to him, and with complete assurance and without an hindrance, he proclaimed the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ. Verbum Domini. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. And the Lord has made his salvation known. In the sight of the nations, he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song, sing praise. The Lord is the Lord, the power. Sing praise to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and Manolia's song, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Sing joyfully before the King, the Lord. Dominus vobiscum. Et spiritu Lexio Sancti Evangelum Secundum Mateum. After the crowd had eaten their fill, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and proceed him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was, be was, was being tossed about by the, it, by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. And at once Jesus spoke to them, Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. 
He said, Come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Verbum Domini, For the last 2,000 years, especially, well, of course, after the death of St. Peter and Paul, they have been uh, very much revered and honored and venerated because of their witness and because of they themselves giving, giving up their lives for love of Jesus Christ as martyrs. And both made contributions to the church that are still effective and fruitful even today. And it is for this reason that we continue to venerate these two apostles and admire them for, for the things they did in the name of the Lord. And today the church celebrates the dedication of the Basilica of Saints Peter and Paul. And you know, some of us have uh, had the privilege of, of going there in Rome, and this is a very beautiful basilica. You know, it's gorgeous and magnificent and all that, and it's uh, you know, very edifying to behold. Well, why do we celebrate this St. Peter and Paul, this basilica? You know, at one time, Rome was, um, was a place where people admired and revered uh, those of the Roman Empire. Uh, also, uh, various gods with a small g. Okay. And, you know, for, for years, as the Roman Empire reigned over various parts of the earth, a lot of people would go and memorialize uh, some of these, uh, these, these former emperors or these uh, great uh, uh, warriors and, and, and generals, and you know, they would uh, go and, and pay them some kind of homage. But you know, a lot of these uh, men who, were, who did you know, very uh, uh, powerful and influential things for the, the Roman Empire are, are long gone and even forgotten. Now, of course, there are some who are remembered in the, in the history books, but Many of them are, are not remembered anymore. You know? And as far as Saints Peter and Paul, you know, they are still venerated 2,000 years after their death. And why? Because of God's blessing on them, because they were apostles, because they were men of God who, who because of their obedience, God worked powerful things in and through them. And so now we, we think about God's power, you know, God's, uh, the, the grace that comes from the Lord, the graces we receive from the church. And thanks to, to the witness of the apostles and, and to their successors and to, uh, and, and to those of the clergy that we are so blessed that we have, that we could receive the grace of the Lord through the sacraments. You know, today we hear about uh, St. Peter you know, he's, he's walking uh, in the water. He sees Jesus, you know, and, and they're, they're, uh, they're kind of uh, frightened. They think they, they see a ghost, the, the apostles you know, or the disciples here. And, you know, they, they begin, of course, to get a little scared. And w what is this? You know, and then they recognize Jesus. And then there they go walking. You know, Peter comes out and walks toward, toward Christ. And, you know, uh, this is something new for them for the apostles. They, they've never seen something like this before. And it's, it's, it's fascinating. You know, the, uh, one thing, um, speaking about newness, one thing uh, St. Augustine says that the church is, is, uh, is, is forever ancient, but yet forever new. You know, God's always doing new things in the church. 
You know, bringing about, uh, of course, his goodness and, and newness. And, and the, ch the doctrines and the dogmas of the church do not change. You know, they, even with, we've got a, a vibrancy, a, a newness, and, you know, you see the, the church uh, going into, uh, um, as like here in EWTN, using modern means of, uh, of communication to evangelize, uh, to reach out uh, to the lost and, and those who, who need the Lord. And, and so here, something's going on here. And, and this is something they've never seen before. And, and they panic. Well, again, let, let's, let's remember that God is always doing a new thing. First, we remember that he does new things in our lives. He makes us new continually by the reception, by the grace we receive from the sacraments. This gives us life. You know, th this, this helps us to go from glory to glory as, as uh, St. Paul teaches us. And in the church universal, God is still continues to do new things. Okay, and but yet nothing changes. Now, uh, over recently, um, we had uh, this synod, and, and there was a lot of uh, misinterpretations about what actually uh, happened there. You know, uh, some of us uh, uh, may have uh, even panicked a little bit and says, "Well, you know, the church is uh, is moving away from its doctrines. It's no longer thinking uh, conservatively anymore. You know, the the uh, you know the disaster is about to come upon it." But no, that wasn't what was going on, you know. Uh, this was a synod on the, of course, on the family and, uh, you know, and, and, and life and all that. But you see, we only got one interpretation. And, you know, the interpretation we got is, is of like, well, they're talking about uh, uh, homosexuality. They're talking about people uh, who are not married outside the church. And yeah, now they're talking about, uh, uh, about that they want to see, receive communion. Well, you know, uh, uh, first of all, the, um, they're bringing these issues to the table because this is what's, what the people are talking about. You know, in a synod, um, uh, the various uh, peoples meet, or bishops, or, you know, there's, there's synods and, and dioceses, there's, there's synods in the church, and, you know, there's different levels of the synod. But at certain, at certain parts, especially in the beginnings, they, uh, what, the, what they do is they bring to, to, to the table what's on the minds of the people. What are the, what are the people asking for? It's not, they're not saying that we're going to do what you, what you want us to do, but they're simply saying, this is what the people are talking about. Now, uh, according to uh, a, a cardinal who spoke um, last week on EWTN News Nightly, I think it was Cardinal, it was cardinal Dolan, yeah. And, you know, he says that this, that what they brought to the table uh, with, you know, the things that are on the, on the people's minds, he says that this was only a little fraction of what they spoke about. He says that most of the synod was on the, um, the beauty of family life, you know, on, on life in general. And, you know, about, about the teachings of the church and, and illuminating this, you know, and all that. And, and there was just a small portion on, on this other stuff, you know. And, and it was just, again, just simply to say what, what, what the people are thinking, the ones outside the church. And then uh, find, uh, thinking about new ways to invite them in. You know, uh, all of a sudden, you know, it was, it was, it's very easy to think that, well, um, well now the church is, is, is giving uh, consent to, uh, you know, uh, uh, getting married outside the church or, uh, or, or, or homosexual marriage or, or anything or all that. They weren't saying that. <laughs> they were saying that, that there's a home for everybody here in the church, that this is a place for sinners. This is where sinners come and, and receive the Lord and sit at the feet of Jesus Christ the Lord. This is where they find mercy and forgiveness in the church. And, and at the same time, I mean, that should be telling all of us that, hey, we got to keep inviting them into the church. Everybody. It's a place for all, you know. And, uh, and, then, and then so what we hear in the media reports is we hear all these pieces of, uh, of information and, and, uh, and like uh, these little sound bites here and there. And a lot of them were, were being misquoted. And, you know, uh, uh, they, they, they were quoting various bishops and priests and saying, you know, and it made it sound like they were, they were against the Holy Father or saying things against him. They even, uh, even hear in the media reports that they take um, the Holy Father's words out of context, you know, and, and put them in here. And it makes it sound like, 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 like a disaster is coming. But no, no, it's not. <laughs> you know, and, and uh, 
And, and you know, since from the very beginning of, of the history of the church, you know, all, a lot of these types of scandals and things like that have come against it, but the church remains powerful and, you know, and victorious. First and foremost, because Jesus Christ said that it was going to be victorious till the end, you know. And, and so it will continue to be because Jesus said so. And, and then so th this reminds us that, that yeah, yeah, hey, the church is in, is in God's hands, you know. And, uh, you know, he, the church continues to do powerful and wonderful works for the glory of God like we have here in, in saints, in the examples of saints Peter and Paul. He does wonderful work on, uh, still through, in and through us. And, and in the church universal, we, we, we see this all, all, all over the place, you know. Various efforts for evangelizing, uh, for uh, ministering uh, to, the, to the needs of the poor, uh, for also uh, education as well. You know, what institution, what organization on earth is doing so much? You know, the Catholic Church is, you know, all, all over the, the world. And so God has its hand on the church. And so, you know, like uh, a lot of people, the media likes to pick on the Holy Father, okay? He, he's, he's a very holy, righteous, good man, you know, and, and, and a very good heart. And, and we see this in his actions, okay? And now, like, if we're hearing little pieces of news, we can't just focus on those things, you know, because, like, like I said, they're, they're taken out of context most of the time, all the time, I think. Um, but, but look at everything he says. You know, there's this wonderful uh, app, you know, uh, for those who have iPhones and pads and all of that. It's called the Pope app, okay? And they have uh, his writings, his homilies. And look at what he's saying there, you know? Look at, look at everything he writes. It's, it's really, he has beautiful work, you know, uh, especially work, uh, um, some of his homilies on mercy and, and, uh, and forgiveness and, and, and charity. You know, these, these are wonderful to, to read, you know, very edifying for the soul. So, again, as a reminder here, you know, God continues to bless his holy church. And it will be victorious to the end. So, we need not fear. God is continually doing new things in and through it. And it will never be destroyed. Because Jesus said so, that, that not, the gates of hell will not be victorious over it. And, you know, God is faithful. Even when we're not faithful, he is faithful. And so all, all, and to even in, in personally, you know, just knowing him, trusting him, looking towards him, continually giving ourselves to him, you know, and, and that God who is faithful will give us the same victory as well. God bless you all.